Hey guys, um, I want to do a, a, want to be as quick as I can make it. A uh, video on uh, creating your turntable animations for your wall sconce. Um, this is going to be uh, kind of a, a neat little thing on setting it up. Uh, a little bit different than um, some other turntables, uh, but I decided I'd, I'd go ahead and uh, make one for you. For you. This will be a little bit different than uh, what we typically want to use for rendering a turntable or any kind of a nice production render is you're always going to want to use a, a three-point lighting setup at least um, in order to get a really good kind of lighting on your object. Uh, you need a key light, backlight, fill light, um, these kind of things set up so that you can, uh, so your object will always be well lit. Um, in the, this case, what we're probably going to be doing is we're going to kind of shift these lights a little bit and leave uh, kind of a darker side to our wall sconce. And the only reason we're going to do that is because this wall sconce glows. And so if it glows, we want to kind of show off the, the emissivity, the, uh, the, the glowing of the object. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a lighting setup that will work with the sconce, um, but also show off the glow. All right, so the first thing I am going to do actually is to get my camera and everything set up and then we can add the lights and, and, and tweak that. All right, so personally, the way I, I do all my turntables is the first thing I do is I give myself a circle. All right, just a standard NURB circle of indeterminate size um, that I can kind of just put around my object. All right, this is going to be our anchor and it's going gonna, it's gonna to work uh, to show out the rotation of our, um, of our camera. The next thing I'm going to use is under rendering, we have our camera. So I'm just going to create a camera and then move it out kind of a nice distance from our, from our object. And then I'm going to set this camera up. So what I'm going to do is go to panel, uh, perspective, camera one. Let's just hit five so I can kind of see what's going on here. And uh, I'm just going to pull it back a little bit. So it kind of frames roughly frames our, our, our sconce. Let's uh, turn the grid off and then rotate it down so that we're slightly above slightly above and away from our primary object. Okay, this is just kind of a simple setup. We'll, we'll end up dialing it in a lot more accurately later. Now, there's one thing I want to show which is Right now, if we were to rotate, this is probably not going to fit, per se, where we're going to want to go. Um, we're probably going to want to rotate more around the center of the sconce than this kind of the center here. Um, so we're going to have to end up moving this. So what I want to do is make a little my little rig. So let's go to Window. Let's go to Outliner. And then take our Camera 1, Middle Mouse Drag over NURB Ner Circle 1 so that it's now nice and parented. And then that way when we rotate circle, our camera is rotating and that way we have a nice central location. All right. So what I'm going to end up doing here is moving the circle kind of more into the middle of the sconce. That way um, when it rotates it'll frame it and rotate it more from, from the middle of the sconce instead of being kind of shifted off. Okay, uh, we can fine tune this this in a little bit. All right. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is to set the animation up. And let's see here. What I want to be on is let's go to time slider settings animation, uh, and I want to be on 30 frames per second. Um, and then we want definitely to make sure that our playback is going to be in make sure our playback is set to be continuous update real time there we go not every frame make sure it's playing back at real time all right so that'll that'll start our set all right so the next thing I want to do is instead of binding the animation to the camera I'm going to bind the animation to our NURB circle so translates fine the rotate we want is going to be rotate Y. So let's start at, let's change our frame range here. Let's start at z uh, zero. And typically uh, six seconds, eight seconds, something like that is a pretty good range. We can, we can play with this um, in a minute. 
um, as far as seconds, but I'm going to start with 120 frames. Okay, that'll be four second kind of loop. Starting at frame zero, go ahead and key select it here, and then drag this all the way to 120, and then key a 360. All right, in order to create our loop. So now, um, when we play it, you'll see the camera is spinning around. Um, this is also the same model that I used for the baking. So right now everything's exploding. Let me go ahead and kill those keys real quick. All right, back to back to normal. It's no longer exploding. Um, after I did a poly unite in order to combine it all, just needed to delete the history in order to stop the the frames from doing that. So let's click on the frame, hit play. And it's doing a nice little spin, but see it's doing the slow start, slow stop, ease in, ease out spin, and what we want to do is create a continuous loop. So what we need to do is go to Window, Animation Editors, Graph Editor, um, and where we have our nice long animation, just want to select this and then hit a straight line so it's a linear animation. And then now what we'll have is we'll have our nice loop. Okay. Now to prevent it from repeating 0 frame and 120 frame, what we do is just drag that down to 119 so that it's a nice continuous loop. Okay, so 120 frames, looks pretty good, um, nice, nicely framed, that'll work. So we'll get to doing the resolution gate and setting the final up here in a moment. Alright, so the next thing I want to do is add some lighting, okay. Um, what I want to do is come in here and first thing I want to do is add a directional light. Okay, this is kind of going to be our uh, fill light or key light. Um, and what I want to do is just have it kind of coming into our object. We we'll put it on the left side, put it on the right side, either way. Um, and the, while the position of this light, because it's directional, doesn't necessarily matter, um, I still like to position my directional lights just kind of in the the angle that they're going to be projecting on my scene just because it helps me to um, visually understand them a little bit better. So if I hit 7 to go into lighting mode we'll be able to see kind of the angle that I'm looking at here with um, this light. You can see the effect in real time here as it's as it's moving across. And so what I want to do is I want to kind of have it angled so that it's basically pretty dark on this side okay um, maybe not quite that 45 degree angle but I want to have it coming in maybe make it a little bit from above um, kind of a nice view that way all right so basic directional light the Sun whatever you want to call it um, that'll be our first light all right our next light I kind of want to use a spotlight for this one so this one looks like the flashlight just click on it move it over and so I can find out what this one's going to look like I'm going to give it a color a bright mean red that'll work and then just rotate it over and as you can see what's going to be illuminated by the spotlight will be lit up pretty well red on the model I'm going to kind of pull it back so the cone has an effect here I'm actually going to pull this one down just a little bit and then aim it just slightly up okay just so it has more of a that third point. I'm also going to kind of pull it over and in. All right, so creating more of a, a dynamic contrast. So if we look from above, we have kind of the angles coming in. Okay, and so if you match it kind of with the original 45 degree kind of look, then what you'll see is they're kind of at 90 degree angles. So we've kind of got this 90 degree angle light uh, going on in the scene. All right, so this is also going to help bat light the back end of the of, of the model. Um, let's pull it down just a little bit more, and aim it up, over just a little bit, kind of more of a of a down lighting, up lighting. All right, so with these two lights, these can probably be our our two lights for the moment. May may add a third one over here, depending on how how it looks. Um, let's go ahead and get these set up. All right, so the first thing I do is concentrate with the uh, directional light, make this more of a sunlight. So let's give it a little bit of a yellow tint, just uh, just uh, just enough to kind of make it uh, 
that direction. Let's dial down the intensity just a tiny bit, okay? Um, have this be our kind of our most intense light. Actually, I can just leave that as one. Depending on how the lights work, sometimes you'll get over over bright going on. But what I like to do is to, again just have a little, maybe not quite that much, but just a little bit of a warm color to it. Um, shadow color. What I want to make do is make the shadow color sort of the antithesis of my light color. So that's my light color. I want to have something that's going to be kind of a complement of that and then drag it down almost to black but not quite black okay most of the time it's better not to have pure black shadows all right and then come down and we're going to use ray trace shadows um, when you use add light angle what it does is it's going to um, increase the the angle of, of the light rays so that it makes creeps for a, a softer shadow um, so what i'm going to do is just do a 0 0.5 and then say about four shadow rays and then drag that down to, to like one because this is going to be a ray depth limit so how many times it would bounce and really I just want a um, few rays with a little bit of a light angle to create kind of a softer softer shadow so the next thing I want to work on is Mr. Spotlight over here and instead of it being bright red I actually kind of want to make it a cooler light so let's just kind of drag it over just a saturation just a little cooler okay um, pretty well bright but just a little of that blue tint um, the cone angle add a little preumbria to it just a smidge of drop off to cause it to, to kind of fade have a little bit of a fade on it kind of soften soften the light in a little bit the intensity I'm going to bring that down to about 75 percent just to make it not quite as bright as our as our main light shadow shadow color again I'm going to go for kind of a complementary so if this is going to be this if this is our light color then where are you Mr. Blue let's do it this way shadow color I want to grab my light color and then for my shadow color I want it to be warmer and then very dark okay so just a slightly warmer shadow cost, uh, cast from the cool light uh, come over to weight ray traced again give the light a little bit of radius a few more rays and, and not not much of a, of a depth limit okay and so this should as you can already see in the um, in the viewport window this is already given as kind of a nice lighting of, of the object you can see kind of the blue tint here and a little bit more of a warmer kind of shade on this side and then of course we have kind of our darker side going on um, the backs kind of been darkened so we can really see the the glow and then come over to, to a more well-lit asset um, if it's still too dark you can kind of over bright this a little bit um, don't dial it up way too much no, not, not very good results I'm actually gonna go to 1.1 on this one um, and see what it kind of gives us all right, so let's just see what this is going to look like all around. So I'm going to go to my renderer, make sure it's viewport 2.0, 5, 6, 7, turn, turn the lighting on, got our camera set up with the play button. Now she's spinning. We have a nice little kind of preview. Um, let's go ahead and turn shadows on. Uh, this is the screen space ambient occlusion. And then we can multi sample it. Just gonna have a nice little preview look going on. So it's looking all right at the moment. Um, what we're gonna do is in the next video, we're going to get go and set up and render out the frames.